Welcome back to another episode. Stay tuned for... As a cruiser, this would be on the top of my list. Drill a hole in your motor like so. For an important item like that, it could save your life. And some things arrive that we have been waiting for. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hello, it's replacing all the fly screens. So when we we're in San Diego, were we in San Diego? We couldn't get this stuff in San Diego. Why did we put this stuff in? We were in the Sea of Cortez and we were like, this will be a job for... Oh, I thought we were right. in Ensenada. Anyway, we were somewhere where we couldn't get the right cord and we used this stuff. This is like some... It was a clothesline hanger. Clothesline. It was, you know, a make-do by the captain because he's very clever and this is all we had at the time. And thank goodness we did it because we came across bees in the Sea of Cortez and it was a lifesaver. But they are falling apart now. A job today while we wait for our sail before we get put back in the water. A couple more of these windows out for Belly so she can replace the screen. So we've got this one out. We've got this one out and I think our bedroom is I got that one out maybe the bathroom so we're all about the fresh air so we like to have our windows open but we don't like flies and bugs can you pass me the um the multi-grip styling sure Something you may not know about these two. These two are probably the most competitive on the boat. And <laughs> Lee, this was supposed to be Bella's job, but now <laughs> they are racing <laughs> to get these finished. <laughs> I don't know where she gets. She must get it from her mother. So they are now competing to see who finishes first. I think I've, can you check and see if I've done this other one, Belle? It's a little one. <laughs> it's a little it's one. A little one. Bella's just informed me that I've just done a little one. Is that implying the bigger ones take more time, Bella? Toya? Alright, this one's done. I can put That's this one good. back where it goes. You got this, Bell. This is the way I've worked out. You just hold your hand on this so you don't go through it. You go like that. Alright guys, I have here a Mantis navigation light, so first off, thank you Mantis. This has been missing for probably the last 10 years of our cruising. We haven't had an actual light for our tender. We've had to improvise and we've always had to have a headlamp. It works, a headlamp, and has worked for the last 10 years for us, but the amount of times we get caught out without a light because it's not on the boat and ready to go. I can't stress the importance of having a light on your tender. We've had personally, like good friends of ours, uh, Nelly die, seeing we were cruising with them when we first got to Indonesia, Ollie and Alana. He was hit by a boat in the Mentau eyes. He was really, really hurt and had to be flown back to Australia for medical treatment. Hit in the night without a light, so. As far as I'm concerned, this light is an absolute must have for anybody out cruising. It's so simple, you don't need a battery on your boat, you, you don't even need to actually mount it on your boat. These little kits come with sea sucker, so even if you don't have the time to mount this, you just put these sea suckers on, pump them up, and call it done. And that's our mounting plate. That's gonna be a mount for the light. One of the mounting options is like this. You can have it like that and then you can actually pull it apart. You can actually pull it apart and take that away if you're say leaving your tender unattended. At a wharf somewhere you can take it away but for us we've actually got another use for for this for the sea sucker and in this situation we're just going to mount this straight onto here and we're going to screw this. All these fittings come in the box and we're just going to have this so it can be on and off just like that. 
So it's going to take me five minutes and for an important item like that, could save your life. I know we haven't had one and like I said, we've tried to always have a headlamp on, but it's not always. You, you tend to get called over to another boat or you get delayed on the mainland and you're like, oh no, my boat's so many miles that way and you've got no light and you could be in a busy harbour. We're just going to mount this straight on the back here. Drill a hole in your motor like so. Just put a mark on that. I don't want to um, follow through with a lot of pressure and hit something I shouldn't, so I'm going to take this off. So there is a lot of vibration with an outboard motor. So I'll just see if this works first. Okay, so I'm going to mount that there. Actually got a lock washer on there, but tied on there. Because I don't intend to take this off. Oh, so that doesn't vibrate off. This is only a really old motor. I don't know how much life's left in this, so I'm not too phased on drilling and putting a bolt inside here. But uh, if you've got a nice new Yamaha 25, which we'd like to get, or 30, I might use the suction cap. There it is there. So that's the first part. If you didn't want to go that way and you've got that beautiful motor, you don't want to put a hole in like I just did, there's your suction cap alternative. But these things take a lot of weight. They use them on roof racks on cars and everything, so they really work. Go underneath this little bit of plastic, it's a little solar panel. So if you run around all day in this, you're gonna have a nicely charged battery for the evening. We'll just mount this on like so, and then you give it a twist so it locks it in. And then you've got a few options here. You can see you've got your port and starboard light and your white light. You can leave it just port and starboard, or you can leave it just white. USCG approved two nautical miles, so out on the water they should be pretty bright. That's it, it's like a five minute job and you're not gonna be stuck without a light on the water. So as a cruiser, this would be on the top of my list of something you need for your tender. Like I say, I haven't had one of these, but we do now and it's a matter of turning that off and storing this up in your bow locker or put it in your backpack and take it along to town so it's there when you get back. So it's not missing when you get back, I should say. So for those of you guys out there that have high field tenders, if you had an older model, they did have a bow, they had two lockers. They had the fuel locker and an anchor locker. The newer models, one locker. So I did like the two, but anyway, this is what we've got. And this is a problem you're gonna face. And now all we've got left is this little bit of space here. So chances are to find an anchor that's going to fit in there is going to be pretty hard. But again, our good old friends Mantis, they've got this little absolute ripper of an anchor. It comes apart. So you can pull the pin here and it comes into two pieces and then you can fit one piece like so, followed by a little bit of chain and then the shank of your anchor also folds up into there. If you've got an anchor locker situation where your tank takes up more space than needed and you still want to get your anchor to fit in there, Mantis has got you covered there as well. Ah. Well, we had Chuck and Deborah bring down our boom bang from Phoenix. <laughs> Whenever, wherever. Yes, we are very, very grateful for you. All of you. <laughs> Bye. 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 See ya. Chuck and Deborah have just brought down an awesome item uh, that we've been waiting for for a while. Lee has been wanting this since, since we got on this boat. He's like, where is the boom bang? So nearly two years. Lee has been waiting for this. Boom bang delivered down to Puerto Penasco. So you all know what it is in a nutshell. We just put up a, a block here, which is, which is fine if you have a um, normal just boom, but with ours being an in um, furling boom, you really need that solid bang to keep the angle right for furling purposes. So it should make furling along with our new precision sail, should all work perfect. And where is our sail, honey? Oh, that's coming tomorrow and Dwayne is going to be picking that up for us. So another fellow boater. And, so uh, we thought that Chuck and Deborah actually, we timed, but they were timing it so that they were going to come down and they'd have our sail. But our sail didn't arrive. It arrived five hours later. Yeah. <laughs> 
It was close. And it was very, very close, but we were like, oh, how are we going to get it now? But Dwayne, our good friend, is going to do a run up to Phoenix, so he's going to grab that for us. So we are so doped. Yeah. So this time tomorrow we should have a mainsail. We're very close to going in the water now. We sure are. Let's have a look at this thing. Hopefully it all fits. Hopefully uh, all the pins and everything works out. But we'll unwrap it and we'll have a look and uh, see what we've got. Thought he was going to make us a pin. Our old boom bang, or what were the remains of our old boom bang. This was one of the attachment points here. And they have come with little grub screws. But the new one just came with holes. So I just had to go down and get myself a little 516 tap, which I've just tapped out here. And hopefully that should work. Beautiful, okay. So I've just had to use some bolts. Obviously we're in Mexico, so for me to try and find some 316 stainless grub screws wasn't in the equation. That's all right, I'm just gonna use bolts for now. And if I do find the need to wanna to replace them later because they don't look as aesthetically pleasing to the eye as these little ones, I can do so. But for now, this will get us going. So there's four of those. I've got one more left to do. The first problem. The second problem is where the track is on our boom there's two other obstacles in our way like two other i think they're maybe even just like a reinforcement it's about this long i've undone it i've put penetrating oil on it and i can't get it out of the track hence why i think they've gouged away at the track here and opened it up so this will actually slide in and come down so the new one is actually a little bit bigger as you can see so I'm just going to have to open our track up. I don't like cutting the boom like they've done, I, and I probably wouldn't, but they've already done it. And I'll probably just clean up what they've done, and it's only like another half inch more I've got to do. I wouldn't do it personally like that, but the person before me has. It's just not somewhere where I'd want to put cut marks in the boom, but anyway, it's done, it's done. So yeah, I'm just, the first part of it, I'm just tapping these out. I've got one more to do. I've got four bolts instead of these grub screws, but I can replace them at any time if I feel the need to. It'd be nice to have a little bit of cutting fluid, but I don't have that, nor do I have the proper attachment for tapping this. But I'm just using a shifter for now. I'll do the job. My old tap and die set that my grandfather gave me actually got left on Catalpa 1. That's those four done for now. They are a little bit long, these bolts. I could probably cut them down to size. See how I feel. A number of holes up there where they've tried over time to get it right by the look of it. Obviously had furling issues in the past. But we do have a new precision main that should be cut to, to exactly how we'd like it to work. Okay, so we have mounted our new boom vang. It's 90% correct. We had a little tab down here, which was a little bit close, like about a millimetre close, but we didn't need that hole anyway. So I'll just remove that and I'll file that off when I get a set of files. Seems to fit pretty well at the mast and we're just waiting for our mainsail to go on and then we can do the final adjustments, trim these bolts down. We had to re-tap some holes in there and I only had bolts and they were long ones so I'll wait till we get our boom at the right angle and then I'll cut those bolts down and tidy that little section up but all in all that's come together pretty well. I've just got a couple of lines that were hanging off the old setup, a couple of old blocks so we'll have to work something out there temporary until we do a, a, a mast clean up and then we'll uh, do something else there. But for now, it's looking good. Okay, we are driving to the US border today. Our visa is up tomorrow, and we thought we would go up and walk back into Mexico and get on a Mexican visa. But <laughs> it's Sunday, and I we were hoping to be able to post some parcels, some packages, because there's a post office just across the border, but it's not open on a Sunday. We have arranged Dwayne <laughs> to bring our sail down and we thought it was best for us to go up and drive across the border with it because uh, Dwayne is a little bit unlucky going across the border. <laughs> we love you Dwayne but he does always get searched so we don't know what it is but we are coming up to take the sail across the border and hopefully um, we go through no problems. 
no questions asked. Uh, we can't drive across the border in this car because it's not registered. So we have to drive <laughs> up to the border. We're gonna walk across the border, meet Dwayne, get in there. Why didn't we just hire a car? Uh, we didn't hire a car because we are broke. <laughs> not, it's not an ideal situation. We were hoping to take one more trip up to Phoenix, stock the boat up, get all of what we needed, all our supplies. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So we are going to pick our mainsail up though, which is the main thing is we have been waiting for this mainsail to leave. This is why we are still here. So it's pretty exciting that we are getting it, but fingers crossed and toes, everything goes well today. And we get it across no problems. Good news, we just drove across the border with our sail and we didn't even get stopped. We didn't get asked any questions. Picked up our new precision mainsail. <laughs> what? Woo -hoo! What did you guys have against the bean bags on the wish list? Like, oh, you love the lures. Oh. But the bean bag stable. <laughs> so we just got a lot of stuff from Amazon. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody who bought anything off our wish list while we've been here. We are so, so grateful. We will have to take it down because we won't be able to receive any packages for a while. But we are just like so much gratitude for everyone. Without each and every single one of you, what we do would not be possible. So thank you to our patrons, thank you to anybody who subscribed, anyone who likes our videos, that comments, that watches, that has like donated to us or done something towards our journey. We are so grateful for you, like unbelievably grateful. And we're so excited to get back in the water because not only is it us going, continuing our journey and being back where we belong, but you guys are so excited for us and I love that. I love that our audience and the people that have been watching us for years and years and years are so pumped for us to get back in the water. It's, we're not gonna lie, this has been a very, very big challenge for us. We have gone through a lot of emotions. We have a lot of tears some blood spilled we've just it's been a very big long hard eight months we've had some great times in between don't get me wrong we always make the most of where we are but it has been very very challenging we are done with boat work we are so excited to get back in the water and continue our journey and it was it's, it wasn't possible without you so again thank you thank you thank you thank you you all mean so much to us and we are so grateful and I'm gonna cry. Thanks Jan, he uh, has lent us his car. He's actually off his boat working in Australia and he's left his car here and said we could use it. And uh, we've used it today to get to the border so we're really grateful on that. We didn't have to hire a car so. Yeah, saved us a lot of money and it also like while we've been here we've been able to drive to the shops and get food and it's been just amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you Jan, we love you. We can now go and fit our new Precision Sail. Yes, thank you Precision Sails, we are super grateful. Like I said, our community that is behind Sailing Catalpa is absolutely incredible and we are so grateful for you all. If this is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. We love you. This all is not possible without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully next video we are splashing and we're back, baby. We're back in the water. Fingers crossed. <laughs> all right, guys, here it is. This is our precision mainsail. That's it for another episode. Thanks for joining in, guys, and we are super excited. Next episode, this mainsail is going on, and we will be one step closer to getting back in the water. All right, bye.